Hello, Vibers. Today, we're talking about fate. We're taking a look at how fate is playing out in your life right now. Some of you may have seen my conversation series I did uh, over the summer where we talked about life, path, and destiny. And one of my guests was Odessa Mall, Mystic Intuitive Healer. Odessa's episode, my interview with her, she talked specifically about how fate plays out in our lives. And I was very intrigued by this because I happen to be a person who um, typically likes to think I have a lot of control over my life. I tend to focus on free will. But ever since Odessa began to introduce this concept to me of fate in a way that is not so scary, I've started noticing some stuff. Some stuff that happens that I am clearly not in control of. So I thought this would make a very interesting topic for us to explore together here on my channel with one of our tarot readings. Now, if you happen to be new here, my name is Sean, and I am so, so, so happy that you are joining us. When we do your readings today, we are going to use four Oracle decks and a tarot deck for each reading. And we're gonna use our oracle cards to take a look at what area of your life fate is playing out in, the higher self qualities you are encouraged to um, lean on or bring out during this time, your chakras that might need balancing or uh, just some special attention again during this transition. Typically when fate comes along, there's a transition that we experience. And then finally, which goddess, god, or guardian, so which spirit guide uh, could be a good personality for you to emulate or even rely directly on if you feel called to appeal to them or to pray to them. Each of the groups will have a different tarot deck, but all of the groups will have the same set of oracle cards looking at those same topics that I just mentioned. So just like our last pick a card, I have put together three combinations to help you choose your piles. You can, if you want, look at these three decks and let that be how you decide, or you can take a look at this right here. So first we have pile one. Pile two. And last but not least, we have pile three. After you've selected your pile, scroll down to the description box of this video and you will find the timestamps taking you to your individual reading. Um, and it also should be appearing across the video itself if I've separated it out correctly. Now you may also find that you feel yourself drawn to more than one pile and that is perfectly okay. In fact, you can listen to the entire video and then determine which one you feel is actually your reading for the day. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoy it and I will see you at your reading. Hello, 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 group one. Welcome to your reading. So as I mentioned in the introduction, we are today taking a look at how fate is playing out in your life and what you need to do to actively participate in it so that you can stay in alignment and have a smooth transition. Usually when fate is playing out in our life, we have a transition happening and, um, come out as unscathed <laughs> as possible. So what you see here before you are uh, four oracle decks and a tarot deck. We're gonna pull from each of these to get some insight for you on how to best navigate these changes that are happening outside of your control, okay? So I'm just gonna put the tarot deck over to the side for a second while we first pull from my astrology reading cards. These are house cards. And listen, as you listen to your messages today, if you like them, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, um, as well as tell me in the comment section what resonated, oh God, I said it, what aligned, <laughs> what aligned for you today, what harmonized with your spirit, what uh, felt good, or even what caused you some confusion or some concern. I would love to hear, you know, how 
you received these messages today and when you comment on the videos when you give them a like when you subscribe to the channel it does help push the messages out to more people who might benefit from them okay so let's find out what house what area of your life these are the house cards in the astrology reading cards uh the house yeah the, the house cards in my deck of astrology reading cards what area of life oh there we go is being affected by fate for you right now okay so you guys have your home and the tool oh, sorry the roots of your being the fourth house so this is very much uh having to do with your sense of security for sure all right and now we're going to take a look from the higher self oracle on how your um how to connect with your most elevated sense of self to navigate these changes let's find out all right we have here love Ooh, i love that especially since we are talking about home right and our home life is typically populated with people that we love on some level whether it's our uh, family um that we come from or the family that we've made or people who are functioning like family in our lives because we live with them. So they may not actually be uh, blood relatives or relatives at all. Uh, they could be chosen family that we've put together from friendships that we have or people who have developed into, again, a family-like dynamic with us because we share a space. So love is called for with this change that you guys are experiencing right now. Next, we're going to take a look at the chakra love cards, ironically named. I don't know if that's the right use of the word ironic. But anyway, um, aptly, we'll say aptly named the chakra love cards to see which of your chakras needs attention or balancing um, as you deal with this fate changing situation. Okay, we have creativity. Use creativity to transform your pain into positivity and this is your throat chakra so i'm starting i was already starting to feel this but i feel it even more so now that for those of you who chose this group the um the way fate is playing out in your scenario right now it looks like the ending of what has been your sense of security Something is changing and it is happening outside of your control. And that can make us feel fear, definitely insecurity, anger, resentment. Resentment is one to definitely be careful of. And one of the reasons why your higher self is saying, you know, to bring love into the situation, to, to connect with your sense of love your ability to love love is a choice it's not a feeling we get a resultant feeling after choosing to function in love but um your higher self is calling for you to do that because it is the best way to help stabilize what you are experiencing and to get through it as unscathed as is possible there will be more than likely there will be hurt feelings on uh, either side or even if it's not about a breakup between two people whether they're romantically connected or friendship uh, connected through platonic friendship or or leaving you know your family of origin having a fight with someone that's that you're living with or have been living with that's a member of your family it might it actually again with it being fourth house it's your sense of security overall so it could just be moving on from something that is just time and not even that it's, you know, some dramatic ending or breakup. Perhaps a lease ended or a contract ended or an agreement. Maybe you've gotten a job that's moving you someplace else or the other person is, but somehow, some way, this connectedness is not going to be able to continue. There is a parting of ways energy here. And with us getting throat chakra and use creativity to tr uh, transform your pain into positivity, um, I feel like that has to do with, you know, when we are afraid, when we're insecure, when we're hurt, when we're angry, sometimes we'll shut down and not speak about what we're feeling. Sometimes we do it because we're trying so hard to take care of the other person's feelings 
or we feel as though we'll betray ourselves if we say something that we don't really mean, as in, uh, again, saying that things are okay or that you're fine with it when you're really not. I'm getting that it's very important for you to express what you truly feel in this situation. And you don't, you can take your time in figuring out how to do that. You don't have to like jump in and just say, like pop off and say the first thing that comes to mind. Is anybody out there guilty of doing that? I can tell you that this girl behind the microphone <laughs> usually says the first thing that's crossing her mind. And, you know, I think pretty fast. So a lot of times it's it's OK. It's fine. Nothing terrible happens as a result. But, um, you know, there are times where I might hurt people's feelings uh, inadvertently by just expressing without thinking about it first what it is I'm experiencing in that moment. And I'm getting very much for you guys. I'm getting for y'all. It's more the op. It's more likely the opposite, a tendency not to express what you're truly feeling in a situation because of looking out for the other person's needs or the other person's feelings. And that is very important for you in this situation to be forthright with what you're feeling and particularly how you're feeling about this change that's happening. And to take your time in developing how to address it. That's where the creativity comes in. And for some of you, this might mean waiting until after the situation has resolved itself, after uh, you or that other person has moved on, moved forward from, from this um this home life, this situation, or again, whatever it is, it could be a partnership, you know, it could be, I don't feel that's likely, but, um, it, it's possible that it is a partnership that is not about the home, but maybe you again have felt like home, have felt like family because you've worked together for so long, so well. And what's really important here, everyone, is to remember the love that you felt for not just this person, but the situation itself before this change started happening to you. And it is indeed happening to you. It's not a choice that you are actively making, unfortunately. Some of you might feel like it is, but there are outside circumstances that are pushing you to make this choice. Because this is definitely a fate-guided transition. This is less about free will than it might feel like for some of you. And definitely about um, a predetermined change. Which means more than likely it's moving you forward into um, something better. Definitely something new. You've probably outgrown what the situation was before. Okay, the uh, I didn't say this as I was pulling because I was still talking on other things, but when we pulled from that last deck, it is the goddesses, gods, and guardians deck. And what we were looking for there um, was a uh, deity or other divine figure, a uh, supernatural powerful figure that we could look to for modeling in the situation, whose um, energies or or story characteristics character traits that's what i was looking for that's the word i was looking for uh energies and character traits we could emulate in this situation to again help us navigate this change that is happening outside of our control and you guys got baba yaga you know and you know i remember reading the story of baba yaga when i was a kid and i remember it being quite the frightening story but in this deck she is you know depicted more like a kindly grandmother and um and her keyword here is patience and you see she's not alone that she's got her uh companion her animal companion animal companion there with you i'm getting for some of you that is probably guidance to uh, there's a, a fear of being all alone or being lonely in your new scenario. And I'm getting uh, for some of you that there is guidance to let yourself get an animal companion. You might identify with the term a familiar um, or a furry friend or a fur baby. Um, but only if you feel ready for the responsibility of it. Animals are, you know, living beings that deserve your love and attention. So don't get one just to be a substitute for um 
the energies of the person or persons who are leaving your life. But, but I am getting that for some of you, you will benefit from sharing your life in your home with an animal who needs it. There are so many animals that need care. The shelters are full of them. Um, but patience is called for here. And I'm getting that your guidance is not just about it being patience with the other person, but patience with yourself, as well as patience with fate as this transition happens. A lot of times when we're going through something, again, something that is not our idea, our decision, we want to hurry up and get through it. And, and when we do that, sometimes we can skip the steps by mistake. And there are steps called for for you to go through this because it is, I'm really getting strongly for many of you, it is about your growth and advancement in your life internally. And uh, this patience is going to help you align with what is happening, with accepting what is happening. It is, you, it's, it's not going to do you any good to try to fight it or try to make it not take place. Remember to, you know, let the whole thing unfold and develop gradually. Not to feel as though, again, you have to hurry up and make it happen. And for those of you who are feeling hurt by the situation, you're going to want to because you're going to want to shut down that pain. But unfortunately, uh, the discomfort, the emotional discomfort um, that you experience with this change is actually part of the growth cycle that you're going through. You're going to be different on the other side of this. So be patient with yourself, but also be patient with that other person and be patient with the scenario itself. Okay, now we're going to pull from your tarot. And this is the uh, Tinseltown Tarot, which I haven't used on this channel yet, I don't think. I have used it some in personal readings. Um, by the way, guys, forgive me for taking so long to... I'm having to do videos every other week right now instead of every week because it is getting... It's been so busy with this being the gift-giving season. Etsy is full of traffic and people are ordering personal readings like crazy um, and taking advantage of my current 30% off sale. So that is... Uh, keeping me super super busy and one of the reasons why I have not been uploading every week but instead every other week okay what guidance what clarity what more can we tell those who were brought to this reading today about this situation where fate is bringing transition to their lives we have four of pentacles yeah again that that's you know four is security it's structure and security and Stability and you know, sometimes when I get four of pentacles in a reading, I read it as um, insecurity, and sometimes I read it as security. It just depends on what the overall energy of the reading is, and also the depiction, the way it's it's drawn for that particular deck. And with this one, I am definitely getting the sense of four of pentacles. Some of you, uh, sorry, the sense of insecurity, insecurity, um, and in particular, you know, pentacles isn't always money. It is your home, your physical life. And I am, but I am getting for some of you guys that this is directly related to financial stability and financial security. Some of you have been re relying on this other person or these other people, um, to be able to afford life. So what I'm getting for you is don't get um, so wrapped up in the insecurity and again, the resentment that you are feeling because of this change. Yeah, for the majority of you, the energy that I'm getting is someone is leaving you. For some of you, it's the opposite. It could be the opposite that you are moving on to something else. But given the overall, the totality of the cards that we received this go round, it is not, it is not for the majority of you that you are going somewhere else. It's that the other person or persons are leaving. And so don't get so wrapped up in not wanting that to be the case, being angry, resentful, wishing things were different. Those are denial reactions sometimes. Um, not always, but sometimes. And what they can do is keep us from taking the steps we need to take to move forward, to get through the situation. So it is very important for you group one to um, don't let insecurity be the primary uh, energy here. Stand in the power of love, the power of being able to speak up for yourself and the power of being patient. Usually it's the person who is higher level or more ascended that has patience in a situation. Aspire to be that person. This is something that is happening 
to you, but also for you. And you have the capacity to handle it. And these cards are a reminder of that for you. Okay. All right, group one, this is what I have for you today. Got them all over the place. All right, group one, this is what I have for you today. Thank you so much for being here. And I will see you in my next one. Bye. Hello, 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 group two, and welcome to your reading. First of all, let me apologize for the fact that it is taking me so long to get you guys your next full length pick a card. Um, I have been super busy because it is the holiday season. And so there are so many shoppers on Etsy and they're seeing the tarot shop and they are placing personal orders. So I have been spending a lot of time doing personal readings for people, which means instead of being able to get you guys a new video every single week, like I typically do during this month of December, December uh, of 2023. I have only been able to get you guys something new every other week, but I do appreciate your patience in sticking with me, those of you who are subscribed. Um, so group two, we are taking a look today, as I mentioned in the intro, at how fate is playing out in your life right now. We have in front of us here four Oracle decks and a tarot deck. We're going to pull a card from each to get you a sense of what area of your life it's happening in, what uh, how you were called to handle it, uh, get through it uh, as unscathed as possible. So with all of that being said, I'm just going to move your tarot cards over to the left and we're going to jump right in. So starting with the astrology reading cards, we are going to look at... We're using only the house cards from that deck right now. I'm going to look at what area of your life fate is doing stuff in. How is fate playing out in your life right now? That's what we are looking to find out. Oh, oh, it looks like for you guys it might be two. We are going to take both of those cards. When both want to come, we take both. So you got the 11th house where the cosmos grants wishes, luck, friends and social occasions and you also got the first house and that's what people see and the impression that you give interesting all right next we are going to pull from the higher self oracle and if you like these messages as we go today, you guys be sure to uh, give a like to the video and tell me in the comments what it is that aligned for you, what you found intriguing or what you absolutely found confounding, confusing, uh, mystifying, uh, angry making. That's not a phrase. What <laughs> made you angry or uncomfortable in the reading today? I, I really... Um, would love to know how you felt as you listen to this. And when you give a like to the video and when you share your comments, it does help more people get these messages. Uh, YouTube goes, oh yeah, people need to see that. All right, this one almost flips, so we're gonna take it. It's strength. Mm. Very interesting. Higher Self Oracle says strength is called for from you. Tapping into your sense of strength. I'm getting the sense that some of you uh, haven't felt very strong lately. I'm also getting the sense that for some of you, this is not the first thing uh, this year or even very recently that has felt completely out of your control. And there's almost a sense of, God, not one more thing. I can't handle one more thing. Some of those other things you've experienced this year have been... Um, the result of choices that you have made, things going differently than you had hoped when you made those choices. But this is one where it is completely out of your control, okay? Where uh, life has decided it is time for XYZ to transpire for the members of group. Oh, wow, we got a lot and we are taking them group two. So you guys, I didn't say it as I was shuffle, shuffling, but this is the chakra love cards. And these are the uh, chakras that will need your attention or possibly rebalancing as you go through this transition that fate is bringing your way. So you got fearlessness, turn your warrior into a warrior, and that's your solar plexus chakra. You got peace and stillness. The answer will be revealed. Look at that. You got manifestation again, solar plexus chakra. Sorry, I forgot to tell you. This um, this is your crown chakra. So this has to do with your thoughts around the situation, no doubt. Which is interesting because I already had a sense with us getting the 11th house and the first house together that this has to do with um, your, your sense of 
yourself in relation to others. Um, some of you might have a habit of of negatively comparing yourself to the people around you. So we'll, we'll see what else comes up as we continue to pull your cards. Um, your third chakra love card is manifestation. Manifestation is the fruit of confidence and belief. So again, solar plexus chakra with this one. Let me just move this over, make a little bit more space. And then finally, we have here chakra balance and the word unity, keyword unity. And it says the only illusion is separation. And there are some crystals given to you to work with in your energy healing here during this transition. You've got blue lace agate, amethyst, and new jade. Now, you guys, before I pull the rest of your cards, I do want to talk about this a little bit. Because, again, when we got 11th house and 1st house together and... Um, the immediate hit I got was around how you see yourself in relation to others and, and the habit of not necessarily seeing yourself in a flattering, self-affirming manner when comparing yourself to others. And then we got these cards here, right? So there's something that's been going on with you. This might be a long-standing set of beliefs, a long-standing habit um, of feeling small, feeling small and what's happening in your life that's that's you know the way fate excuse me fate is playing out in your life right now is there is a major shift happening in who you have access to i'm getting the sense that you are actually going to be forced or are in the process of being forced to level up in who you are around have you heard the because the irony of you is that any tendency you have felt to uh yeah any tendency you have had sorry any tendency you've had to feel small and play small has been in direct relation to you being around small people people who aren't living out their fullest potential either and so in order to get on well with these people or to fit in with that group or to keep there from being disharmony and conflicts you have had the habit of suppressing your own greatness when dealing with these people and as a result you know we become that which we say and we become that which we continually do so you have actually shrunk yourself while trying to stay on even footing with people who are and i'm about to say it some people don't like this phrasing but i'm going to say it with people who are less than you now some people want to go oh nobody is less than anybody else wrong <laughs> wrong some people are more gifted in certain ways than others some people have better um access to loving others which makes them by default better than those people who are out there spreading hate all the time so i don't personally feel like everyone is equal i feel like we have different uh skill sets we have different um uh, uh, personality types, like there's all kinds of ways <laughs> in which we are not all the same. And there are some people out there that are just shitbags. And sometimes we find ourselves surrounded by shitbag people, you know? Um, and for you guys, a, a couple of things are, are coming through. Uh, the, the first being you got to stop worrying so much about how other people see you because nobody is seeing you the way you see yourself because everybody's perspective is different. So you cannot in any way, shape or form have a true sense of how anybody else perceives you. What you have is your assumption of their perception of you, okay? So that's one thing. The other thing coming through is um, it is important to remember that you and others are connected. Now, I know I just went on this whole thing about, you know, some people being better than others or people who are less than you is what I was actually talking about. And what I really meant there, you know, just for clarification, is less capable, people who are less capable than you in any number of ways. Again, it can be about skill set. It could be about uh, capacity for love. It could be about ambitions and dreams, drive, things that make things possible. Not everybody's got that. But I'm getting that you, if you can divorce yourself from this group, you've got that. And fate is not waiting for you any longer to make this choice. Fate is about to pluck you out of that group and put you with other people 
that are going to help you be in the fullness of yourself. You know that phrase, iron sharpens iron, or uh, if you want to be an eagle, you've got to fly with eagles. It's almost like you've been an eagle uh, that's been pecking around on the ground with um, chicken hawks. I, I hope that that analogy makes sense. Chicken hawks came to mind because I don't know how many of you guys are old enough to remember the old Warner Brothers cartoons about Foghorn Leghorn and the chicken hawk. And there's this little like mouthy. I mean, he talked like he was such a big, bad thing, but he was a little chicken hawk and he couldn't really do much, you know, and he was a pest. And I'm getting the sense that you have been surrounded by pests for a very long time. And life is saying no more because it is time for you to step into that which is meant for you. And this does mean separating yourself from uh, some of the, the, whoever has been your primary group, they are not going to be able to continue to be your primary group. But while all of that is true, there is this sense of, um, you know, the collective unconscious or the oneness of all things and all people. And I want you to remember that, especially whenever you tend to think of yourself as less than anybody else or smaller than anybody else. It is impossible, okay? Now, we are all equal in the fact that we all deserve, we all have value. We all have value. And we all have um, worthiness. We're all worthy of love. Some of us just act in ways that make that questionable but the reality is uh group two you are going to be moving into a new social situation and you are called being called to you know re like the fullness of you strength here is not about physical strength and it's not even so much about it is internal but it's not just like strength to get through something i'm getting that it's again power Seeing yourself as more power, power, power. Okay, now we're pulling from the Goddesses, Gods, and Guardians deck. And with this deck, we're looking to see what uh, guide out there you can um, use as a model in their energies or their character traits for, again, handling this transition that fate is bringing your way. So which uh, goddess, gods, goddess, god, or guardian can group two most learn from mm, Lilith face your shadow I don't really even think I need to expound on that first of all y'all know I just did a shadow reading in the last pick a card and then I shared an old shadow reading um after that so there are two shadow readings on uh, embracing your shadow readings on my channel that you might have already um experienced and if you haven't they are there if you want to go and check them out I will try to remember to link them here, but I'm, yeah, I'll try to remember <laughs> to link them here. Um, but here, face your shadow. And you know, what's interesting about this too is in your first house card, you have what people see and the impression you give, what, sorry, what you really have here is she is looking at the self. And I'm definitely getting a sense for you guys that there are, people aren't seeing the real you because there are parts of you that you learned or chose not to accept. And you have to incorporate this into who you are. It is part of your strength. And it is the only way you can truly feel confident. As long as you're hiding yourself from yourself, you will never feel confident. And confidence is called for and belief is called for in order for you to manifest that which you want. You have to stop worrying about what other people think of you. Stand strong and be still, be at peace with who you are. And this will help you begin to create in the world the life that is for you and can be beneficial to other people. It is for you first. And see here with 11th house, where the cosmos grants wishes, luck, friends, and special occasions. So let's focus on the first three or, uh, or the first two grants wishes and luck. It is when we are fully being ourselves that we tend to feel lucky in life. And as evidenced here or talked about here, the granting of wishes and manifestation, those are the same thing. And you are just being called upon to do your part to help make that happen. Life wants to give you so much, but as long as you're continuing to play small, it cannot. All right. So now we are pulling from
from the Tarot of the Divine. Just to see if there's anything else that you need to know about this situation where fate is playing out in your life right now. So yeah, you are going to be moved from these people. Whether you look at that, Three of Cups, that's a, a card about social life, right? Um, it can be other things like celebration, social occasions, you know. Um, and then we also have Two of Wands here. Uh, but coming back to what I was going to say, you are... Um, you're going to be moving, moved. You're going to be moved out of the group that you've been dealing with into a new group. And it's going to be better for you in the long run. So yeah, we get, again, we got two. So you guys, you know, I did group one's reading already. Group one's cards gave us one for each deck the way I planned. Your cards, you've gotten with the exception of, yeah, well, okay. Let me just say it better. With your cards, you've gotten two in the area, in the house cards. You got four in the chakra cards. And now you've got two with your tarot cards. So there's a lot going on with you. And I said that at the top of this reading that you might be having this feeling of, oh God, not again. You know, this is major shift and major transition happening for you, group two. So um, again, we have here the three of cups. And we have the two of wands. And what I feel this is saying to you is, um, change your vision of what friendship means, of what support system means. There again is probably a habit of settling for less than you not just deserve, but less than would do you any good in these relationships that you have been in. It's like, you know, sometimes we'll find ourselves in a relationship where we're not actually getting anything from it. Uh, a dynamic was developed however long ago when we are giving, we are showing up, we are there for the other person. And they may sometimes not even be physically there or sometimes they're physically there, but their mind is not with us. It's on their other stuff, their other life, or they're only focused on themselves all, all the time. Or there's not even just a checking in of how you are, what's going on with you, asking about your projects, your job, your family life, your health. And so there is definitely a reminder here that the world is big and there's a lot of people in it and you are not stuck with this group of people and fate is about to prove that to you by pulling you out of that group. And even if it's not a complete removal of it, uh, you're going to be spending less and less time with these people because a new set of um, allies, for lack of a better word, is coming your way. A new set is coming your way. Yeah. But you need to remember in your shadow, when it comes to facing your shadow, your shadow is that you are great. You have been playing small so long that you have come to think of yourself as smaller than you are. But you are great. You are fantastic. You are magnificent. And you're about to meet up with people that reflect that back to you. And from there, you will be able to do all the things you want to do with your life. Create so much. Make so much magic. And see the things that you want for yourself and that you pray for for yourself. You'll be able to see your wishes come true. Your manifestations take form. In the 3D, as they like to say. All right, you guys, this is what I have for you today. Thank you all so much for being here. And I will see you in my next one. Bye. Heidi ho, good neighbor. <laughs> Hello, group three. Welcome to your reading. So as I have mentioned in the intro today, we're taking a look at how fate is playing out in your life. Now, you uh, see before you here four oracle decks and a tarot deck and we're going to pull a card from each to find out not only how fate is playing out in your life right now but what you need to do what you need to pay attention to in order to navigate it and get through the transition because when fate is doing stuff we are going through a transition uh without you know falling completely apart um unless that is actually part of the change that fate wants for you or part of your lesson. We shall see. Um, anyway, I do want to take a quick second to say thank you guys for your patience in my getting new readings to you. 
every other week over the past few weeks because it is the holiday shopping season. Etsy has been so full of uh, traffic that people are finding my shop for the first time and I'm getting a lot of new clients and I've been doing a lot of personal readings, which has cut into the content creation schedule. So thank you for your, um, and I think it has a lot to do with that 30% off sale that I'm doing right now through December 31st. So thank you for your patience and sticking with me. Only a few people have unsubscribed, but the rest of y'all have stuck around. Um, and I am grateful, very, very grateful for you. Hopefully you will uh, get a benefit from the messages that we are doing today. So I'm going to move your tarot cards over to the left here. And we're going to begin by pulling from the Oracle cards. Uh, the first deck that we're pulling from, it's my um, astrology reading cards. And we're just using the house cards right now because we're going to find out what area of your life uh, fate is messing around in. Oh, there we go. Okay, so you guys got the 12th house. Mm, this is a tricky one. It says, this is the area of your life that is overwhelming. You yield to a greater cause or power. Uh-oh. All right. That, and <laughs> that sounds so foreboding. Foreboding. I, I don't mean it to. Just, you know, like, ignore the lady behind the camera, okay? Um, <laughs> and now we're going to pull from the higher self oracle. To get a sense of, you know, which aspects of your higher self are called upon to help you uh, again with what's going on. What fate is bringing your way. And, oh, look at that. You guys got two. And we will take them both. You got forgiveness and you got freedom. Forgiveness and freedom. Interesting. This is definitely having to do with your emotions for sure. Yeah, and definitely internal stuff. You know, sometimes fate can be shifting things specifically for the physical or the external, but with you guys, it actually seems like it's about internal change. All right, and I didn't say it out loud as I was shuffling because I was I was processing these cards, but now we are looking at these the chakra love cards, and we are looking at which chakra you uh, will need your attention as you go through this. Um, it might require some rebalancing, a little bit of energy work, and you guys got the third eye chakra, okay? And it says dreams. Dreams are where your mind translates the divine. So yeah, I was just saying, I was talking about the internal. Look at this, I, yeah, I keep getting quiet because I'm looking, I'm taking in these two cards in particular. And the, it almost feels like this card is in the same place as this card. Like, look at the similarities here. The use of light, that big open space of light there, or or the light source itself, clearly the sun, Sean. Um, we also have the night sky behind it, night sky behind it. We got this, what looks like mountains, but could be a cloud. Again, these are clearly clouds, but down here at the bottom, they look like mountains. I find this very fascinating. Is this how I had it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then we have dreams. And there's also like, again, a dream-like feeling to this one, almost like going, again, into the eternal or going to the other side, another realm. I'm getting the sense of like astral travel. All right, now we're looking at which, this deck is the gods, goddesses, Sorry, the goddesses, gods, and guardians oracle. And we're going to see uh, which deity or spirit guide um, you can emulate by, you know, um, modeling their energies or their character traits as you experience this change that fate is bringing your way. Experiencing how fate is active in your life right now. We have the goddess Oshun. And her keyword here is sweet success. Y'all, I feel like this has to do with, I definitely said internal. We have freedom and forgiveness. Forgiveness is always about, well, two things, right? Typically, we tend to think of it primarily as being about forgiving someone else for something they did to us. Uh, but usually we can't get there until we forgive ourselves. 
for our part in whatever situation happened that needs forgiving. Sometimes that can present itself as needing to forgive ourselves for choosing a certain path or a certain partner. Forgive ourselves from staying with that person too long. And, you know, if you want to get super metaphysical about it, there's no such thing as too long. You stayed as long as you needed to before you made a change. But it can feel like too long if we gave it a lot of time and things did not go the way we had hoped. All right, now we're pulling from the uh, Modern Love cards. Oh, sorry, Modern Love Tarot. It's Ethany's. Ethany? I think it's Ethany. It's Ethany's... Uh, love deck which you guys have seen me pull from before i usually reserve this for new love readings but i felt called to use it in your reading today so we are getting a sense for group three here of how fate is playing out in their lives right now and what is called upon for them to navigate the situation and benefit from it what can we tell them here we go all right so we have the chariot Yeah, definitely, this is about moving yourself forward and allowing yourself to, 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 allowing yourself to move forward. One of the things that's called upon here is to Stop thinking of yourself negatively because of what has transpired in the situation that is calling for forgiveness. I'm getting that lots of you guys have been getting messages in your dreams about the situation. It could be something that you thought you had already moved on from, but it's popping up in your, your subconscious is bringing it back to your attention because it needs to be dealt with. I'm getting that there is a uh, new love coming your way, group three, um, or um, renewal in the love relationship you are in, if you are already in one that you hope to keep. But for those of you who have been single, new love is wanting to come in and fate is trying to bring it in for you. But you are being nudged to deal with what's going on inside that is residual or left over from a mass a major relationship that had um an extremely negative impact on your life it might not have even be been your most recent one but it's one you know sometimes we'll we'll think of them as like karmic relationships or their relationships where there was a major lesson for us to learn. And that's one of the things that's called for, for you to be able to move into forgiveness and move into freedom. Forgiveness is going to bring the freedom. Forgiveness is going to bring the freedom that you need to be able to stop seeing yourself as a, a failure for what happened, but instead let yourself experience the success of having learned the lesson in your dreams if you, especially if you've been having very vivid dreams that that seem abstract or don't make a lot of literal sense to you uh, might feature locations or people that you don't know in your waking world these are various aspects of you so pay very close attention to what the people in the dream are saying to each other because it's you having a conversation with yourself. And there's something that you need to realize, something that you need to accept, that you have been slow to accept. And it's necessary in order for you to move forward. So this might look like for some of you, like, saying, oh, it's fine, X, Y, Z didn't work out, but you don't really feel that way. I'm getting a little bit of denial energy here. So that for you, it would be about going, it sucks that that didn't work out. It makes me angry that that didn't work out. It hurts me that that didn't work out. 
This is bull that it didn't work out. I deserve that. Whatever the you know thing is, the accepting of the feeling, and that is just an example. It could be any number of feelings or scenarios, but the acceptance of that in order to then say, that was terrible. It is awful. I hate that that happened to me, but it did happen and I'm ready to let go of it. I'm ready to forgive myself for this. I'm ready to forgive the other person for this. I'm ready to move forward in freedom. You are getting a lot of psychic uh, downloads in your sleep in regards to that which has already transpired in ways in which it needs your attention. I'm getting to tell you that when you go to sleep at night, rub that area, uh, that third eye area between your eyebrows before going to sleep to make sure that the visions you get are clear. Ask before you go to sleep to be able to remember your dreams so that you can deal with them in your waking life. If you are a journal journaler, write out what you remember from the dream when you first wake up in the morning and then revisit it again later in the day or maybe the next day to see if your conscious mind can make more sense out of the messages that you got. I'm also getting to tell you that when you wake up in the morning to also rub that third eye area of your head slash face. And, um, and this is in order to keep you connected to your intuition as you go throughout your day, because sometimes as you are going throughout your day, you are so inundated by things in the physical realm that your intuition is taking a back seat or you're not uh, noticing or accepting the psychic downloads in the way that you are able to when you are sleeping. I'm getting that for you guys. Sleeping is when your mind is the most at rest, as is the case for the majority of us, right? And so, but for you, it's almost as though that's the only time your guides can give you the guidance that you need because you have... A lot of you guys might be earth signs. You might be over connected to or have an overdeveloped sense of the physical world. And some of you might even feel a little uncomfortable with believing that you are getting guidance from beyond or the other side or uh, spirit guides for some of you. I, I, probably not a whole lot of you if you're watching a tarot reading, you know, but um, but you might. It might be like there's a part of you that believes, but there's a part of you that's skeptical. Um, some of you might feel much more comfortable with the concept of it's coming from your subconscious mind. And that's fine if that's where you are. Think of that as the other side. But there is a restfulness that you have when you're sleeping, despite any anxieties that you live with as you go through your day and your life. When you're sleeping, you your brain shuts down enough for you to receive the messages that you need to be able to, again, let yourself move forward. And not just moving forward, but moving forward with freedom and forgiveness. I'm getting that some of you have felt that you had moved on, but you had not fully not as your true real self, connected self, aligned self, joyous self, happy self, free self, open self. There is a need for that openness. And you can't have it as long as your brain is still locked away with um, something that is unresolved or that feels unsatisfying or unfulfilling to you. Unfair. I'm getting, I'm getting that word very, very strongly unfair, the feeling that something was unfair. And again, instead of thinking of it as unfair, think of it as this happened in order so I could learn this thing here and move on or grow up or be able to receive something. See, see, this is a thing that we need to remember, you guys. Uh, a lot of us were raised in environments that weren't healthy or great for us. And so who we are when we start dating or even well into our dating or romantic relationship life cycles um, is the person that came from these unhealthy environments. Uh, and then if we have an intention towards satisfying 
fulfilling love, being able to receive it as well as give it, then life sets up a set of circumstances for us to be able to grow beyond that which we became as a defense of um, or def- defense from the the family life that we were raised in. We develop what um, we develop behaviors or character traits um, or beliefs in order to survive or sustain ourselves within that environment. And so then what we become is not really truly our natural self. And sometimes life will create circumstances introduce relationships or situations that help us knock that energy off of us, get rid of those beliefs, get rid of those behaviors, release those character traits, and be able to function in life as the jewel we are meant to be. So it is very important for you all to allow yourselves to receive the messages that are coming your way. These are coming from outside of your conscious self. I don't wanna force a belief in spirit guides on anybody and I don't wanna force an idea of psychic connectivity on anybody. So if it, again, if it's more comfortable for you to think of it as from the subconscious mind, that is fine too. But this fate is forcing you to face that which you have not fully dealt with yet. And when you do that, okay, so here with this deck, Oshun is considered, uh, her keyword is sweet success. I have another deck. Let's see if I can put my hands on it real quick. I can't. It's it's too far away for me to reach while I'm talking to you. Oh, wait, I think I can. Nope, I can't. Okay, um, <laughs> I have another deck. It's called the African Goddess Rising Deck. And in that one, Oshun is depicted as the goddess of love. In the Orishas, uh, which are the African gods and goddesses, uh, she is considered the goddess of love. So for you guys to be able to experience sweet success in love, you have to deal with this uh, stuff that is playing out or, or wanting to come out and be dealt with in your internal self. Remember that you are... You are meant to shine from within. And when you deal with what's going on in there and you knock off the gunk, (laughs) can't think of a better way to put it, you will be able to, the real you will be able to shine through. And that real you is so worthy of love. And you will have, you'll be able to move forward and get that kind of love you deserve from the kind of person you deserve to get it from. 100%. Fate is changing your love life for you. And again, I'm getting the sense that most of you that pick this pile are single. And so this is about, you know, what is going to happen with someone new after you deal with the stuff from someone old. Uh, But for some of you, it is um, also possible that you are already in a relationship and the shifting that is called for is going to change the dynamic of that relationship so that you can have a better dynamic with one another, you and your loved one. Uh, but be open to these messages that are coming through to you in your dreams. That is that is, that is called for for you, group three. All right, this is what I have for you today, you guys. Thank you all so much. Wait. This is what I have for you today, you guys. <laughs> Thank you all so much for being here. And I will see you in my next one.